What's up guys, Shane here. I'm talking today about slack pull or wedging or pre-pull tension or whatever you may call it. Uh, but So today I'm not going to really talk about conventional versus sumo deadlifting. Uh, really just what is slack pull, what is pre-pull tension, and what is wedging, and how to apply it properly to a barbell. Now, um, there's a lot of a lot of people think that it's just pulling, you know, on the bar just a tiny bit, uh, just just so that it's you're pulling the you know the bar into the holes of the weights just so it makes a little clink sound and then you can go and pull, but it's really not. So I'm gonna walk through just my warm ups for the other day and then my top set um, of me executing the, the pre pull slack properly. Um, and again, this goes as wedging, pre pulling. Uh, pre-pull tension, um, slack, uh, whatever you guys may call it, but under the genre of that. Okay, so uh, just to begin with, this is I this is my top sets leading up to 655 pause deadlift. So the main points of pulling slack is to re, uh, is to maintain rigidity in the body um, from the hips all the way really to the shoulders. Um, realistically speaking, it's to the bottom of your rib cage, like the 12th ribs, so that's right here. But I like to use the analogy of the shoulders just because that plays a large role in keeping tight, obviously, because your lats and uh, your rotator cuff muscles attach um, to your humerus or your shoulders, um, what have you there. So nonetheless, again, is maintaining rigidity through there and, and following through with your cues. Um, and I can't can't forget about the most most important part is is all this pre-pull tension um, and pressure this inner abdominal pressure that you build up um, in order to deadlift properly and effectively so I like to use the analogy of tug-of-war so if you throw back all the way to middle school or maybe you still play tug-of-war um, when the teacher whoever blows the whistle to start this game of tug of war are you just going to stand there and hold like very you know limp on this rope or are you going to sit there tense right uh, building up all this pressure and a lot of people have been pulling slack since sixth grade and they just don't know um indirectly it's just like deadlifting so if i have this let me draw this rope attached to my body so specifically going to be my arm so let me fast forward this, this video a little bit here so if I have this rope here and then on the other side is the weights so you're fighting the weights today in tug of war okay the goal of this is to keep rigidity through my entire body and build up as much pressure as possible and accentuating my cues before I actually initiate the pull, meaning I'm actually going to pull this weight off the ground now. Now, I'm going to break it down. Let me delete all this. So we go all the way back. First of all, I always like to tell my clients top-down approach, not bottom-up. Now, what I mean by top-down is... You are getting from the pelvis up, um, I like to say, your body ready to grab the bar and then you pull versus you go down to the bar and then you use the bar to pull on it and then go and pull. So I like to make sure all my cues are set and ready at the top and then I go to the bottom and then I grab the bar and I pull. So I'm going to walk through the cues properly of how I do this. Um, and hopefully this will kind of clear up some things on how you guys actually pull slack. Now, so as you can see there, I brace properly. Okay, I put my I latch my belt, and the first cues that I think of is that I pull my thoracic cavity down and brace into a neutral position. As you can see, I am very neutral and rigid here. The next thing is I'm thinking long arms. Now the next thing after that is I think external rotation. So external rotation, what I mean by that is that you're externally rotating away from the body. So you have this 
pretend like there's a line, the median line of your body. You're going to externally rotate. So whether you're mixed grip, like this or this, <coughs> excuse me, or your hook grip, you want to externally rotate. Now what that's going to do is it's going to engage your lats more and your rotator cuff muscles properly to tense up. And when you're doing this on the bar, you want your arms and your thoracic spine as neutral as possible and as braced and as tight as possible. And those long arms and externally rotating are going to help. Those cues are going to help with that. So, going to go back. So now I have a rigid core. One, two, long arms, three, externally rotating. The next cues that I have, and this is just specifically for conventional deadlifting, is that I want to bend my knees first to touch the bar, and that's going to dictate my hip position. That fast forward is us. Okay, so here, knees to the bar. Okay. I go and grab the bar, so knees to the bar, after I grab it, and right there, all those cues that I just gave you, I'm focusing on building up as much tension as in my body, long arms, externally rotating, keeping the core rigid, and bracing really, really, really hard in my belt. Now Garrett Fear usually tells me... <laughs> that whenever he squats or when he deadlifts he shits his pants because <laughs> he's building up so much inner abdominal pressure that um, he feels very much that he has to go poop. Um, you don't have to do it as much as seriously like that. Sometimes it never happens but you kind of want to think about that is that you're actually building up so much tension just like in a game of tug of war to pull on this rope so you can win so you can be ready. Otherwise, that's going to be that's going to pull you right over. Just like if you weren't tight in um, a deadlift, you're going to get bent over, and you're you're not going to get the lift probably because you're you're leaned over. Um, you're probably going to hurt your back, so on and so forth. The the possibilities are almost endless. So, going back to the conventional deadlift, my cues here: long arms, externally rotating. Um, some people use the cues of protecting the armpits. Someone comes up behind you and they try to tickle you, right? You want you want to protect them. So you're actually rotating. And notice how I'm already pulling tension on this bar. You want to pull tension and, ex and externally rotate, think long arms, and maintain that rigid spine all at once. You have to accentuate these cues here, pulling on the bar. So you're almost using the bar for leverage that way you can using it to your advantage to pull tension on it and that's where you get the pre-pull tension from or pulling slack and I'm actually my knees come forward and touch it the bar and then I'm starting to wedge so and again, again another uh, word for the pre-pull tension is is that wedging cue is because you're using the bar to tighten up your body as much as possible now the most important part is withholding all of these cues as you begin to pull on that bar. And once I feel that I have created this much tension that I need, the tension that I needed, I'm going to actually initiate the pull, meaning I'm actually going to go. And as you can see here, if I delete all these, I'm going to pull it back a little bit because it's going to fast forward. I go. So again, Next warm up, 585, brace. Cavity down, long arms, external rotate, grab the bar, wedge, go. Then top set, brace, long arms, externally rotating, grab the bar, accentuate the cues, up, and that's it. So again, I just want to kind of go over everything the main points of slack pulling, okay? Those cues, long arms, externally rotating, maintaining rigidity throughout the entire time from when you get that initial brace to go down to pull on that tension all the way to the end of the pull. 
and then that's pretty much it. You really, really want to make sure that you're creating all of this tension in your body so that you can pull on the bar properly and uh, reduce injury rates hopefully. And if you're doing it right, you should feel a huge difference in explosiveness off the ground just because your, your body's so ready to pull this bar. And I see, I see a lot of flawed pullers, um, specifically novice or you know beginners, um, that will just tug on the bar. They'll, they'll go down and they'll just jerk as hard as they can and their body gets jerked forward. You don't want any of that. If you get any of that, the risk for injury is pretty high and it's just not as efficient because if you're pulled out of position right off the bat, chances are you're going to fail out of the top just because your shoulders are so far forward. Trust me, it's happened to me many, many times before in learning how to properly um, get the right technique and specifically just for me. And again, for conventional versus sumo, I believe that the long arms um, maintain a rigid neutral core and externally rotating the arms and pulling on that bar are cues that are kind of universal for just and deadlifting in general. Um, now, how you may go about dictating hip position is going to be different from conventional to sumo, and that's just the nature of, of the powerlifting and deadlifting. So, um, but other than that, I hope that you guys learned today how to properly pull slack. Now, I, I hope I can uh, create some more videos in the future, and I appreciate you guys watching if you made it this far.